Hi everyone, this is Teacher Rutel, and today I will be discussing range, interquartile range, and semi-interquartile range, their definition, interpretation, uses, and steps on how to solve them. The range is the difference between the highest and the lowest scores. It is an unstable measure because of its dependence on only two extreme scores, the highest and the lowest scores. Any change in these scores changes the range. Let's find the range of the following set of scores, 5, 10, 15, 20, and 25. To solve for the range, we subtract the lowest score, 5, from the highest score, 25. So we have the solution. Range is equal to 25 minus 5 is equal to 20. Our range in this data set is 20. So how do we interpret the range value? When the range value is large, the scores in the distribution are more dispersed, more widespread, or more spread out. We can say that the distribution is heterogeneous. On the other hand, when the range value is small, the scores in the distribution are less dispersed, less scattered, or are close together. We can say that the, the, the distribution is homogeneous. Let's now go to interquartile range, or the IQR. The IQR describes the middle 50% of values when ordered from lowest to highest. To find the IQR, we first find the middle value of the lower and upper half of the data set. IQR is therefore equal to the value of the third quartile minus the value of the first quartile. The semi-interquartile range, on the other hand, is the half of the IQR. To solve for the SIQR, or the semi-interquartile range, we have IQR divided by 2, or the value of the third quartile minus the value of the first quartile divided by 2. Now, we solve for the IQR and the SIQR. Let's consider the following set of scores. 16, 10, 12, 15, 13, 18, and 11. Step 1. Arrange the scores in ascending order or from lowest to highest. We have the scores 10, 11, 12, 13, 15, 16, and 18. Step two, we find the median or the middle score. In this following set of scores, the median is 13, considering that we have seven scores. So our middle score is the fourth score, which is 13. Step three, we find the value of the first quartile. The value of the first quartile corresponds to the median of the lower half of this data set. Considering that our middle score or the median of this data set is 13, our lower half is composed of the scores 10, 11, and 12. Therefore, the value of the first quartile is 11, which is the median of the lower half of this data set. Step 4, we find the value of the third quartile. The third quartile is the median of the upper half. Considering that our median for this data set is 13, the upper half is composed of scores 15, 16, and 18. Then we find the median of the upper half. The median is 16. 
since it is the middle square of the upper half. Step five is to substitute the values in the formula. The value of our first quartile is 11, while the value of our third quartile is 16. So the IQR is equal to 16 minus 11, which is equal to 5. Our IQR value is 5. To solve for the SIQR, we have the IQR divided by 2. Our IQR value is 5. You divide it by 2, then the SIQR value is 2.5. Now, let's try to find the interquartile range and the semi-interquartile range given an odd-numbered data set. We have the scores 16, 10, 12, 15, 13, 18, 11, and 20. Step one is to arrange the scores in ascending order or from lowest to highest. So we have the scores 10, 11, 12, 13, 15, 16, 18, and 20. Step two is to find the median or the middle score. Since we have an even numbered data set, we have the median between the scores 13 and 15. So to solve for the median, 13 plus 15 divided it by 2 to find the average between these two scores. So 28 divided by 2 is equal to 14. So the median in this data set is 14. Step 3 is to find the value of the first quartile. We already found the value of the median in this data set. So the lower half of this data set is composed of scores 10, 11, and 12. To find for the value of the first quartile, we determine the median of the lower half. Considering these scores in the lower half of our distribution, the value of the first quartile is then 11. Step four is to find the value of the third quartile. To find for the value of the third quartile, we have to determine the median of the upper half. The value in the, of the median in the upper half can be found from these scores 16, 18, and 20. And the middle score of this upper half of this distribution is 18. So the value of our third quartile is 18. Step five is to find the value of the interquartile range. So the interquartile range is equal to the value of the third quartile min minus the value of the first quartile. So 18 minus 11 is equal to 7. The value of our interquartile range is 7. Step 6 is to determine the value of our semi-interquartile range. We substitute again the values in the formula. Our interquartile range is 7. So 7 divided by 2 is equal to 3.5. So the value of our semi-interquartile range in this data set is 3.5. Let's consider the following characteristics and uses of range, interquartile range, and semi-interquartile range. The range is the simplest measure of dispersion. It is the least precise measure of dispersion since it is only dependent on the highest and the lowest scores. It cannot be determined for open-ended distributions where one or both ends are not fully defined with specific numerical boundaries, such as in age group 20 and below or income level 20,000 and above. It is needed only to determine the spread or scatter of scores. 
The range is needed to estimate the class size or number of classes. And it is used when the scores are very few. It is also used when rough comparison of variability of two or more sets of data. Now we go to the interquartal range and semi interquartal range. These measures are more precise measures of dispersion than the range. Since it includes the middle 50% of the scores in the distribution, it is not influenced. They are not influenced by the extreme scores or the scores or data points that are significantly higher or lower than most values in the data set or distribution. The interquartal range and the semi-interquartal range are also needed to describe a distribution with the median. They are used with extremely high or low scores or when there is a big gap between scores. When the main concern is the middle 50% of the scores around the median, we use the interquartal range and the semi-interquartal range. So that ends our discussion of the range, interquartal range, and semi-interquartal range. And these are the references used in this video. Thank you for watching and hope this video helps. Stay safe and healthy always and see you in my next videos.